Steam and Molten Magics inhabit the many worlds of Warhammer, and in this video we'll be showing you how to paint the red hot objects for your models. For this guide, we'll be using a Cities of Sigma Alchemite Warforger, as he has a blazing hot rune cube in his tongue staff, and one in his crucible. But you can use this guide on anything you want to be a blistering, red hot weapon or relic. The paints we'll be using are on the screen right now. We also have an additional list of equipment we've used, but you can use whatever brushes you feel most comfortable with. If you're new to painting or want to brush up on your skills, you can check out the Citadel Colour Painting Essentials videos to learn all about paints and painting techniques. We'll start by base coating the areas with Quarax White. A couple of thin coats will be plenty over a lighter colour, but if you're painting over a darker colour or already have painted most of the model, then you may find you need an extra coat just to get that solid white colour we need. Remember to thin down your base paint slightly and let each layer fully dry, giving us a smooth base that we need for our next colours. Next we'll use Imperial Fist to colour over that Corax white. This gives us our first fiery colour for our details, as this is the hottest part of the object. You won't need too much on your brush, so apply it in small amounts, avoiding the other details that you've already painted on your models. After that first contrast is dry, will apply a smaller amount of Blood Angels Red, leaving some of that Imperial Fist showing towards the runic markings, working towards the outside, as this is where it would start to cool down. Remember to also paint the inner crucible too, towards the bottom of the pot. Add the paint in small amounts, as you can always add more layers. By now you should have an object with a yellow centre naturally, blending into the darker red shell. Then we'll use the smallest amount of Saigor Brown towards the outer edges of the object. This acts as the coldest part of the object, so avoid these areas that we've kept in Imperial Fist and Blood Angels Red. We can also use this to paint the cooler part of the Crucible. If you accidentally get the darker colours onto the brighter yellow core, we can always use Corax White to cover over. Then apply the last three colours in order to get back to this stage. Once that contrast is dry, we can apply Corvus Black to the smoke for this object, avoiding the Imperial Fist that we applied to the start of the cube. A couple of thin coats will cover over that light undercoat and any stray contrast that we may have smudged on. If there isn't any smoke on your objects, you can also use this colour to indicate the coldest parts, or even soot, like inside our crucible. Looking at photos of blacksmithing can really help you get an idea where it sits. To finish off the smoke, we'll add a highlight of Dawnstone to the raised areas, keeping those shadows nice and dark. You can get a nice point to your brush by rolling it onto the palette, and this also helps control how much paint you have on your brush too. You can either use the tip of the brush or the side, so you hit the tops of the smoke plumes. And for the object, we'll add a highlight of Fire Dragon Bright to the edges. On the rune cube, we'll paint the corners and start to break up the line on the cube, just like if the metal was trying to expand with all that magical heat. If you think you've applied too much, you can always use Saigor Brown and dot it back into the line, creating those little breaks. And there we are! Your Alchemite Warforger has its rune cube so scorching, it burns hotter than Aksha itself. For more tutorials, tips and tricks, check out citadelcolor.com, or head to your local Warhammer store, where our amazing staff will be happy to help you. Well, we hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.